for a little bit. Um, I'm now going to uh, start to take people through a range of different uh, technical demonstrations as, as to how people can start act uh, interacting with Digital Earth Australia today. Um, so we'll go through three different levels, so please stick, stick with us. Hopefully there's something in here for everybody. Uh, and then at the end of uh, these demonstrations, we will then have a pretty extensive time for, for question and answer. Um, so we'll start with how to just uh, look and interact with the data, um, how to access either the web services or the raw data products to integrate into your desktop applications, uh, and then finally how to look at um, setting up uh, your own uh, data cube or analyzing the data cubes that already exist to produce new insights for, uh, for your uh, customers and users. So in terms of looking at DEA, um, why might we want to just look at data? Um, it could be that we're just looking to um, test some knowledge that, we've, uh, that we have as, as a hunch from the field. We, we, we want to see what it looks like. It could be that we're managing properties remotely or that uh, we are managing really large scale uh, properties that we can't visit uh, daily, let alone weekly or, or anything like that. Um, we could just be looking for interesting reports and validation uh, to create images to go into reports and publications. And we've even had uh, a number of expressions from people uh, that are looking to use these images for things like artworks. Um, I will be presenting a lot of um, web links as part of this. Um, don't feel the need to scramble to um, write those down. This presentation pack will be distributed in full uh, over the next couple of days, along with links to um, this presentation uh, in video format as well. So all of this will be available um, after the uh, presentation. So we'll start with the clearest example of just looking at data, and that's to use uh, National Map. National Map is a um, data visualization um, platform uh, which was built by Data61 from CSIRO. Uh, and is now uh, operational uh, within Geoscience Australia as well. Um, but it includes a lot of data outside of Geoscience Australia. It is really, um, it's a federal government repository for uh, looking at all sorts of data. So to find out what kind of data, um, we can just click the, the add data button and that brings up all the categories from data. We have things like, uh, you know, NBN rollout maps in, in, in communication. We've got uh, health statistics, uh, we have the results from the Australian Bureau of Statistics Census uh, historically, and we also have satellite imagery. So the, 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 this is to look at the, the basic satellite imagery. Um, Landsat is data that we've accessed from the American government, which is at a 25 meter pixel resolution and captures the whole country every 16 days. Uh, Sentinel is from um, the European Union Copernicus program. Um, that captures the whole country uh, about every five days, and that's at a 10 metre resolution. The Landsat data goes back to about 1988. Uh, Sentinel data, I think, is only the last uh, four to five years. So that's, that's one way to access data. There, there is a derived product which is also available here under water observations from space, which can be accessed. Uh, and we also list a range of data providers here and Digital Earth Australia is, is there uh, under the data providers as well. So there's a range of different ways you can access data and, and all of that comes with metadata as you see on screen. To give you a worked example as to how this might be useful, um, what I have added here um, is two derived products that are using the Sentinel data. So this is data from the last couple of weeks. Um, what we're looking at is uh, dairy grazing land in southwestern Victoria. Um, and what the image is showing is something called NDVI, which is basically a view of how healthy vegetation is. And in this particular scale, a little bit counterintuitive, but in this particular color scale, the more red the image is showing, the more healthy vegetation there is there. As it goes through green, it's kind of somewhere in the middle, it's okay. And as we go through to, to blue, that's really showing the water areas or the areas where there's definitely no, uh, no vegetation. And what we're going to demonstrate is a couple of the, the little useful things within uh, National Map. What we have here is a slider, so we, we can pan back and forth between uh, different images. On the left, we see a slight lo slightly older image. This is from the 17th of August. And what we see, if we look at two primary paddocks in the middle here, um, we see, based on how red we're looking at things here, we've got a paddock that's pretty healthy. 
Uh, and next to it, we've got a paddock which is almost as healthy. It's got a little bit more yellow tinged in through there, which means the NDVI is not quite as strong. Um, but this is showing two paddocks which are pretty helpful, uh, pretty healthy. If I then uh, scroll back uh, to have a look uh, at, at uh, the image on the right, this is only five days later on the 22nd of August. We see that um, this paddock in the middle here um, has really dropped a lot of that healthy red color uh, and uh, is, is looking like there's something that has happened over that five day period which has caused this. This could be as simple an explanation as uh, we've been grazing cattle in that area, so of course the amount of uh, healthy vegetation has gone down. Or it could, being that we're in the middle of uh, winter in uh, Victoria, it could indicate some frost damage which has gone undetected yet. This is really to just highlight changes at scale um, using empirical data and then leave it up to uh, the people with the on-ground knowledge to then start to uh, answer and address. So this is an example as to how we might use a national map to view and look at data. Um, as another example, I'm going to load up the um, Earth Observations from Space portal, uh, which is in Geoscience Australia. Just a caveat on this portal, I'm using this for demonstration purposes. The, the functionality I'm looking to display here will hopefully be migrated to National Map quite soon. Uh, so this service is not likely to be live in the long term, but it does show you um, the capability that we can use for some of the derived products. Um, what I'm going to load in uh, is a layer called Water Observations from Space. This is something which uses the full depth of historical information um, back to the 80s um, to have a look at uh, how often the satellites have detected water in a particular pixel over time. Um, so in the products area up the top left, I can add in the water observations from space product and we see displayed all the areas where there has been water over the past 30 years. The way I'm gonna use this data product is to zoom into some peri-urban area outside of Bendigo uh, and have a look at um, farm dams. So this might be useful, let's say I'm uh, a farmer, I'm looking to purchase a new property. Um, all of these uh, colorful pixels that we can see represent the different farm dams. Um, and what we can do, oh, uh, of course my uh, Chrome is just crap, this is the, this is the, uh, the problem with live demonstrations. Um, what I'm gonna do uh, is just zoom back into this area um, and click on individual farm dams. So I can have a look at how reliable uh, the, uh, the water is in that particular dam. Lots of people say, please buy my product, I've already invested in the infrastructure, look we have dams for water access. Um, and if I click on this little time series uh, graph here and I click on one of these smaller dams, uh, it takes maybe 10 seconds, it will go and do um, a 30 year analysis of that particular dam and tell us that there was water here 65% of the time, which is a pretty reliable dam. Um, just uh, down the road, there's, there's another dam that's there which is much bigger, which you'd think would be better, but what we can actually see is that that big dam actually only has water 11% of the time. If I was making a decision as to which one of these per, uh, properties were gonna be more reliable for me to be producing products from, it would probably be the first one. Um, so those are just a couple of quick examples of why we might be looking at data. I'll now move on to those that then want to move up a little bit and start to access the data products themselves. Why we want, might want to access data products is really to uh, incorporate them into our standard business flows as they exist at the moment. This could either be by accessing the data live through a web service to incorporate into some kind of online application, or it could be to download the raw imagery data sets so that we can do some um, some analysis on that using some kind of desktop, GIS, or remote sensing platform. I have a few examples up here on, on, on screen, but they should be relatively obvious why you'd want to access some of this data. So uh, again, I'm gonna distribute these packs, so don't try and write down these web service links. Those are there so that they can be used later on once you have this pack in hand. Um, these provide um, links to um, open uh, geospatial compliant uh, web services which will allow uh, anybody to type this into either their online platforms or their desktop GIS, for example, and immediately access a range of different data products. Um, the ones, the three that we've got here, are the Sentinel-2 near real-time data. So this is currently um, a rolling archive of the last 30 days of the most up-to-date 10 meter resolution um, satellite captures. That's being extended out uh, as we speak out to a 90-day archive, which should be a little bit more useful. 
Um, there are also composite products which show at a 30 meter resolution, um, the Landsat uh, data products um, every 16 days back until the 80s as, as, as web services. Uh, and there's also an example of a derived product there, the water observations from space layer that I just demonstrated um, can be integrated um, using a web service. What I'm showing now on screen is just a quick example as to how to do that. Um, this is using an open source GIS package called QGIS, where I've just uh, clicked on WMS as a data source, um, pasted in the link from this slide, uh, and then selected from the range of products that came up from that web service, um, a display of, uh, of Brisbane, I think this is, uh, or somewhere in, in, uh, in Queensland, uh, within the last kind of 16 days as well as then a derived data product, which is also up there, which looks at change in intertidal extents over time. Um, this, uh, these services can be just as easily used in, in common web platforms and in commercial packages like ArcGIS. People also might just want to straight uh, download the data in, uh, in a, say, a, a NetCDF or, or a TIFF format, which are, which are pretty common formats. NetCDF data can, is available on the national uh, computational infrastructure uh, from Canberra. Um, these include the same data sets which were available in the previous web services, but also a, a significantly larger array of um, analysis ready data and derived data products. So this is where you really get the raw data to start to create new products and a, and a larger variety of derived products like the fractional cover that Trevor demonstrated earlier. More information, particularly from the, uh, from the Copernicus uh, and Sentinel side uh, of things in terms of information and data access can be found at the uh, Copernicus Data Hub link as well. Um, and also a lot of the data, so the Sentinel near real-time data and all of the Landsat derived products are also available already uh, in Amazon S3 buckets. So these can be accessed uh, right now, we see a list here of, of all the uh, derived data products that are available. Um, and uh, through any of these, uh, we, can, we can click in uh, and go to a, a particular um, latitude and, and longitude and then pick a time period uh, and have a look at the data products that are, that are there to download. This can also be used to connect your uh, Amazon analytical platforms to, to start to do analysis on this raw data. Um, so just to answer Roland's question up here around WFS, uh, so WFS is not so relevant. What we're mostly talking about here is, um, is raster products at the moment, um, which are uh, going to be available by Christmas this year in WCS. Um, next year, as, as more derived products that are made that may uh, include the creation of vector derived products, uh, WFS uh, could be considered uh, sometime next year when, when that becomes more relevant. But certainly, uh, in addition to the web mapping services, uh, the WCS uh, should be up by the end of this year.